Welcome back friends. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Visual Studio Code with Azure Functions. What are all tools and runtimes you may need in a brand new fresh machine. So I will basically walk you through end to end so that you experience when you have just the bare metal operating system what all you need. First and foremost we need the Visual Studio Code that is the editor which we will be using with function so what i'm going to do i'm going to just open this visual studio code in my browser and then download the stable version for windows and while it asks me to download and then i just simply click on run and it's gonna go ahead and run this um, okay and accept next 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 and i'll say all of this next install so, so this is gonna go ahead and then get installed in my local machine it's a pretty fast download because the size of this um whole package is below 100 mb i think around 70 mb or so and once this is done i can say just finish and launch the visual studio code in my desktop and you will see pretty much the visual studio code is coming up over here right and then i just go ahead and close this this is the first thing i need then i need the dotnet core 3.1 so that's the sdk where i will be developing writing and publishing my code so that's a that's the whole thing i need so i will also install this dotnet core and let me just walk you through the wizard this is also fairly simple if you click on the installation all i'm doing in windows you can also <clears throat> use it in the ubuntu or in mac os so all of these things will work in all other platforms. hence i chose these specific versions and tools so <clears throat> you can see that dotnet core is getting installed while this is getting installed and getting configured what i wanted to draw your attention to is that we need an extension for to work with azure functions and then we need some tools to work locally in using in azure functions so to do that what i'm going to do i'm going to just go ahead and then copy this tools and open in my browser and then maybe open another tab and let's just put it here and i open this function core tools and install core tools and dependencies right if i just go ahead and click on that you can see that um the for visual studio code debugging requires 64 bit so i'll choose the version 3.x 64 bit which is the latest version so this is also i'm gonna go ahead and then run while they done this i just want to make sure that the dotnet core is kind of configured properly so i'll say close it's all right and i say next accept next next install and this will kick start the installation process it should be fairly simple to test my installation so far what i am going to do is that i'm going to open this local command prompt the windows command prompt and once i open this i want to run a few things to check if my dot net is installed i can see that dot net is installed right and if i just say dot net dash dash info it'll tell you that if we have dot net version 3.1.9 and then what is the SDK and what all 
uh, .NET Core runtime got installed, right? So you can see pretty much here. And then once this function tools are installed, what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna run something called func just to see if the func is kind of recognized. So it is just now installed. So the path should be now available only when I have a new command prompt, okay? So let me check if the func is installed. Yes, the tools are installed. So you remember that if you have a command prompt open and then you are installing something which is basically adding the value in the Windows path environment path variable, then it don't reflect in the existing command prompt. You have to close the command prompt or you open another command prompt fresh after that is done and then you will see that. So you saw that initially the func was not working now it is working okay so this is also fine the last but not the least we need one thing that is an extension now i will i will not use just the azure function extension but i will use the whole azure extension which basically comes with other azure things which i can work with visual studio so let me just open my visual studio code uh, which i already have installed and I go into let's say uh, the extension section and then here I go and say search for Azure if I do that it's gonna go ahead and say Azure tools and this is from Microsoft you can see that if I go and click on install this is basically a package of many different other thing including functions so you can see that function is here and you have other things also so i will install that so that i don't have to manually install individual uh, components right so this is the one i wanted and this once this is installed i will also install let's say c sharp and then i'll check who the publisher is it is microsoft you can see that uh, the number of downloads and the company who published and then installs just to make sure that if there are uh, let's say uh, different um, vendors publishing the similar extension what is the extension you are installing right so that's important you can you will see a couple of individual person also in created the extension you may have a um, few in additional capability but just to make sure that you choose the select the publisher while installing the extension so we are pretty much done let me just reload this um, visual studio code and then i will come over here and then uh, open the visual in this visual studio code now what i'm gonna do is that i'm gonna go ahead and then open the azure option in the menu the right hand side so you will see <clears throat> that it will show you the list of things but while it is getting loaded i'll also open up my command palette which is this one and i'll type azure function you can see that um, the azure function comes with setup instruction now to work on azure function you need a project but let me just start creating a function let's see what it says so it will say that you Ha, must have a project to open and create a function so i'll say create a new project and then i will say func app identifying that it's the the world's greatest function app and then i will select which language i want to work against so i'll say c sharp and then it will ask me what is the trigger by which the function will be awake or invoked so that is http trigger and i'll leave the the default name a default namespace and then i will make it anonymous which means that less headache in terms of what i want to achieve is to just to show you that extension is working just to test also for myself because i don't know without if anything is missing all right so let's just close this and Visual Studio might <clears throat> suggest you to install some additional um, extensions if you find happen to work on spe something specific which 
probably having an extension will make more sense you can do that for example if i haven't done the c sharp uh, extension installation it would be uh, recommending me to install that because then it will identify um, like um, all the uh, statement completion uh, keyword coloring etc so now what it is doing it is basically <clears throat> restoring those missing nuget packages uh, so there are a couple of uh, packages getting uh, getting configured here so I'll just uh, load it you can see that it is all restored so now you can see that function is pretty much looks healthy let me do this local build if i run the local build what it will do it will use the function tools which i have downloaded earlier and run that just like funk run uh, it will just um, execute the local emulator and it will show you an url so this url is this one Okay, you can see that URL is showing up over here. I can just simply go ahead and open a browser. Okay, maybe I can pick up this browser, existing browser. And then I open an URL. I can also use tools like Postman to um, do the HTTP activities. So let me copy it again. I'll use the follow link which ideally should open you can see that uh, this is showing up that HTTP triggered function executed successfully pass a name in the query string or the request body for a personalized response okay let's try that request body it said right so I must go here and then use another tool that's also a good probably for this video is that i want to use postman that's one of the tools i can go and download the app i can even use the the browser based postman if i don't have to download but i prefer to have it in my development box so once this postman is sort of downloaded, I'll be able to pass a value in my um, body and then we'll be able to show you that in, in that. So this function is pretty much working. So I'll I just refresh this and then just not loading so let me just close few window and then I say post download okay it's just taking some time so it's all right we'll go back and what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go ahead and let's say deploy to my Azure subscription so to do that let me see if I can go to portal.azure.com okay so since this is the first time I'm logging into the machine and then I'll continue to the website and then use my credential to log into this and I'll use this that's the login and then this is the password and I say yes I'm fine let's get in so once we got into the Azure subscription I just wanted to make sure that subscription is up and running uh, while I'll, um, I'll have all the access to to do things like that so I will go ahead and then uh, create a resource group and then deploy the function. So let's do that all from my Visual Studio code. Okay. So I have got the extension kind of loaded, which I installed. Like you can see that app services functions. Because this is for the first time, it is asking me to sign into Azure. Right. It's right now I'm not. So I will use the same credential. And then it will ask me to log in again into the portal. And then once it is done, um, the Visual Studio basically will be recognized 
by the Azure. So you can see that I have got my subscription name showing up. I, it shows me a list of uh, this thing functions. I can even go ahead and create a function. So I can say that I can create a function. What is that function is all about and all this stuff. Uh, and I can also use this Azure function. Okay, let me just open control shift p azure function and then i say that deploy to web app if i do that deploy to web app and then i choose which function i need to deploy to web app right and then it will ask me because there is no web app in the connected uh, Azure subscription. So let's say create a new web app. And then I say enter a globally unique name for the web app. WG Funk 2002020. Okay. Hopefully this is something unique because it requires a public URL. And then you can see the progress at the bottom. It shows that it is now trying to create something in my Azure subscription. And once that is done, I should be able to see the resource group, uh, which I just now probably, probably it will go ahead and create that in an existing resource group. And then I will also see um, the app showing up over here in the function. And then it says always deploy the workspace function app to WG Funk app. Yes, I'll say yes. And it's gonna kick start the deployment process, and that's when interesting things happens. And you see that in the output window, it basically will tell me view output. If I say that, it will say that um, the step by step activities already has happened right and then it says the deployment to whatever function i have created is kind of done that is wg funk 2020 and then i just open this and there is nothing okay because there is a function i need to call so hence i need can go to this uh, azure subscription portal and then i go in the list of resources and I see there is no function okay that's all right I will search for function app and then I just say that yes function app um, no such function app I will also say web okay it got installed in my web app so let's all right that's all right so we'll just see that um you can see that uh, things are getting deployed in web app so instead of that if i just go ahead and let's say i want to go here and then i want to uh, use the same resource group huh? app services windows app central and in that resource group let me go ahead and create a function app okay and then i'll just say hey i want to just reduce the size of the font and then i want to let's say go to this and function app and i say create and then you see that the function app shows up my phone and then it also creates that and then what is the thing you need 
code or Docker container. I definitely need code and then it's .NET Core and then I, it's a 3.1 leave the leave the default region as is and then I say next I can choose either Linux or Windows both will work because this is uh, uh, so let me also switch off the app inside because I don't want to have it for the demo purpose but it's always good to create some logging and automated logging for your application because that helps for future debugging purposes so you can see that my function is sort of getting ready and then once this function is getting ready if i go back to my home i should be able to see them in the list of let's say functions so if i choose function app and then I go into the list. I should be able to see it once it is done. It's still work in progress. So it is saying that uh, the deployment is in progress, which means that I'm going to go ahead and then um, wait for a moment until uh, it shows or reflects that. Now I will also quickly run through, through the whole process again and uh, let me just uh, wait for a moment here and then run it one more time so I'll, I'll just close this thing whole thing and i say close the folder and then i select uh, go to this and i say that hey you know what i want to create a function so let's go one by one and I say create a project and it asks which uh, folder you want to create and then say app 2 okay that's a folder where all my source code will be and this is C sharp and this is HTTP trigger this is the name this is the namespace this is anonymous and this will open in the existing window all of them I did that and then uh, if I have that function ready, I can just simply say um, run it locally and this will basically kickstart the build process and run that function locally. And then I say, yes, I'm done with that run process. It will also restore the missing NuGet packages. And once things are fine, it will show up that function app is working fine in my local environment. That's absolutely um, exactly the thing I wanted to happen. Okay. And then once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and then say deploy to web app. And this time I've got, let's say, browse. Okay. This is the one I want to select. Okay. I'll say deploy to web app. And then I say app to add a config. And then I'll say refresh. So let me just see that if I have the function getting refreshed. Yeah, my function is coming here. All right, so I'll say again. Let me reload the Visual Studio. Okay, and then I say Visual Studio code. Uh, because just now I have created some Azure, so it might so happen that the cached information is not Azure function, right? Uh, and then I'll say deploy to function app, and I say my func wg. And I say deploy, that's going to go ahead and deploy this function app into Azure. And you will be able to see that a couple of uh, activities are happening in a pretty uh, automated and elegant manner. And you will you'll be able to see that uh, once this is kind of published, it will also tell me <clears throat> what is the URL where it got published. And you, you can even see from this Azure um, extension list that something is visible over here and you can see that it is deploying to my function app in azure 
and then if you see here that it also tells you about all other details so while it is getting deployed we just need to wait here or we can go to let's say this portal and then go to this resource which is just now getting its code base and then if I go into the functions um, in the blank function app when you create uh, it won't show any function because it is now deploying you can you'll be able to see the name of the function uh, once this deployment is kind of successful so it is still doing some stuff over here so let me just wait for a moment till this reflects back into the Azure portal and we are sort of done with what we wanted to demonstrate right so how do you set up your Visual Studio code with function app tools for local development and then using the Visual Studio code deployment is complete it is saying deployment is complete so let's say view output and then I say that this is the URL which got generated so if I say follow the link and I say open and this basically opens the function app from a public URL right unlike the previous localhost with this I want to thank and pause here have a good day